Hi, Cowboy Teague in San Francisco, liberal with a gun. Uh, today we're going to talk about how to adjust the dies on a reloading press. We're going to use a couple of examples. We're going to do it on a single stage and we're going to do it on a turret press. Actually, the turret press is really a progressive turret press. Uh, but we're going to show you how to do that because there are a couple of things that you might want to know about, uh, a couple of special things when dealing with a progressive press. Uh, so, let's get to it. Over here we have a set of dies. I happen to be using the uh, Lee Precision dies because they're good and I can afford them and boy they turn out some really fine ammunition. Uh, there's a, there are four dies as you can see here. This is what's called their deluxe die set. Uh, any, in any die set you have the following uh, dies. This here, which I'll pick up, is the decapper and resizer die. You see this little decapping pin which pops out your primer and inside it sizes the case back to its original factory dimensions. This is your powder through expander die. You can see that there's a hole right through it. What this does is it flares your case. You got to flare your case so you can seat your bullet and it also allows you to charge the case. That's what that hole through there is for. That's die number two. Die number three is your bullet seating die. This also happens to be a combination of bullet seating and crimp die. You can actually crimp in the same step, which I do when I'm on the progressive press. Uh, I'll also do so when I'm on the single stage. This here adjusts your bullet seating, whereas the depth of this die here determines your crimp. And finally we come to what Lee calls their factory crimp die. If you prefer to crimp in a separate step, which a lot of people do, this is the die for you. This adjusts the crimp. It also, this particular die, also has a carbide ring. I don't think you can see it in there. Oh yeah, you can. You can see it in there. It has the carbide ring, which actually resizes the entire case back to factory dimensions if, say, you have a slightly large bullet. Of course, if you're using properly sized bullets, you don't need to worry about that. But, some, but it is still kind of good to be able to... Uh, crimp in a separate step if you want to be able to do that. So we'll start with the decapping and resizing die. I will assume that you know how to reload or that you've read about reloading from a good reloading book. There are several that are available out there. I suggest you read them if you haven't done so already. We'll start with a uh, decapper and sizer die. We'll use this press here, this single stage $30 re Lee Reloader press to do it on. And for a case, we'll grab these two 38 special cases. We got a nickel plated one and a yellow brass one. Okay, our decapper die. We just pop it in, screw it in, like this. Then we put a shell in. Oh, wait, we have the wrong shell plate, or excuse me, um, shell holder here. We'll pop that out and put the correct one in. This is for 45 Colt. Ah, there it is. Shell plate number one. Or excuse me, shell holder number one. There are a lot of things we could discuss here. For example, the various shell plates. We're not going to get into that because this is really about how to adjust the dies. Put a shell in. Actually, no, we don't do that first. What we do is we lower our press handle, which raises the ram. And what we want to do here next is, a, is screw this die in, just like I'm doing. It's all the way down until it just kisses the shell holder. and you'll be able to feel it. Good. Then, we screw down our lock nut here. That's it. Now observe. And we have a resized, a perfectly resized 
and D primed case. That's simple. And when we take this off, we grab by the nut, never by the body, we grab by the nut so we don't lose our adjustment. Then we can simply unscrew it. That one's done. Now, we install our powder through expander die. Remember, these are purposely out of adjustment by a good amount so you can see how to adjust your dies. You do the same thing here. Oops, we got a ways to go. We screw it in until it just kisses the, the shell holder. I'm going to turn this up a lot. Okay, now I'm just going to screw it in until it just kisses. Okay. There we are. And now we adjust our locking nut. Done. Now, look what happens. This is also adjust your flare depth, by the way. This is a very big deal, so you got to pay attention here. So, we'll try it. And we look at how much bell we have. And it turns out that's a pretty good amount. That's where you want it to be. See? You see there's this little flare on the sides. That's what you want. Why do you want that? Here's why. When you see the bullet, it just goes right on in. That's how you want it to go. Just like that. Next die. This will be your bullet seating and crimping die. This one is slightly trickier. There are a few steps you've got to go through with this. I use a three step method. Okay? The method is basically as follows. First, I don't even bother about crimp. I don't even think about crimping. All I want to do is seat the bullet first. Get that right to the proper depth. Then I worry about the crimp and then I do my final adjustment. Okay? So first seat it correctly. Then crimp. Then make your adjustments final. Here's how I do it. This here, the thing I'm twisting is the bullet seating part. That adjusts, that adjusts how deep how deeply or high your bullet gets seated. The depth of your die in here in the press determines your crimp. The way I do it, I start by putting the ram all the way down. Let it kiss. Now I make three full turns out, backing it off. One, two, three. That's where I start from. Now, where's that case? We'll grab a bullet, or a bullet, since I cast these myself. Notice there is no powder in here. There's no primer either. We're just showing you how to adjust the dies. So, we adjust it until we're until the the edge of the uh, edge of the case is right at the crimp groove of the bullet. See that there? It's like this. Here's the edge of the uh, of the case. Here's the, uh, there's the crimp groove, like so. Mm, okay, we need to turn this in. There, I'll just lock this for the moment so it's stable. Twist. 
Okay. Yeah, it's a little lower now. Now we just twist our bullet adjuster, or bullet depth adjuster, which is the top one here, a little more, and just keep going until we get to where we want to be. Getting closer, getting closer, getting closer. So you're turning it clockwise each time Correct. a little bit. Correct. Yep, just tightening it. We're almost there. Oh, so, yeah, we're right there. Yep, that's where we want to be. See how it is? Just like that. By comparison, here's a bullet. Yeah. We are right at the current groove, which is the top groove. The top of our case is right there. That's where we want it to be. Now, we worry about the crimp. Okay? To do this, I'm going to do something that initially sounds counterintuitive. I back off this fine adjustment, this nice little adjustment I did to the bullet seating depth. You'll see why here in a moment. So the bullet is seated deeply enough in the shell Correct. that it's not crimped around. The shell's not crimped around the bullet. No, we're going to adjust that next. Oh. Yeah, first we adjust seating depth, then we back off and adjust crimping. See, we, we have to back it off because if we start screwing in the die, that also affects our bullet depth. Oops, can't do that. So we have to back off this great adjustment we just did. I'm going to back it off all the way out, just to be sure, like that. Now I'm going to screw in the die, the body of the die here. Observe. Until I see a crimp. Until I get enough crimp that I want. Ah, just felt a little bit. Almost there. See. There. There's a little bit more of a crimp on it now. There sure is. It's a little rounded. We're not done yet. We'll do a little more. It looks like this. No. Go ahead. That's what I want right there. So that's a sufficient crimp. That's a sufficient crimp. That's perfect. Wait. You got that? No, I do. Okay. Okay. Now, here's what we do for that. Now we grab this and we screw this locking nut right in tight. Okay, good and tight. So that now we have our crimp set. Well, gee, we still don't have a bullet seating depth. That's out of adjustment. We just did that. Not a problem. We have what is basically a finished round. We now put this back in and re we now have a perfect round. Okay, so we can use this as a reference to readjust this back to where it should be. Wait, Watch. Yes, when you say this. Yeah, the, the the bullet seating. I see. Okay, so that's what we're gonna do. Watch this. We're up. And we turn our bullet seating adjustment screw here until it just kisses this now crimped bullet. Or this now, yeah, it's now crimped around. Just turn until you can feel it kiss it. Oh, there it is. Yep. Okay. We have seating and crimping adjusted. We're done. Isn't that great? And now you know how to adjust the three major dies on any, pretty much any uh, press. I happen to use the lead dies, but it works the same basic way for Lyman, RCBS, Seiko, or whoever else makes dies. Um, in our next segment, we'll talk about how to do the same kind of thing on the Progressive Turret Press. See you soon. San Francisco Liberal. With a gun.